everyone, I'm Kelly with the Suburban Soapbox and today we are making the best steak marinade. Now I don't always marinate my steaks, but sometimes you have an extra lean steak that just could use a little extra flavor and tenderization. This steak marinade is super easy to make. Let's get started. So this steak marinade is actually very similar to my chicken marinade, except that I leave out one ingredient and add another. We'll get to that in a second. If you're looking for a chicken marinade, you can get the video here on YouTube as well, and that is also amazing. I like to measure everything in a glass measuring cup because you can see all of the measurements here on the cup. So it just makes it super easy to measure everything out. So we're gonna start with olive oil. A good olive oil, but it doesn't have to be like extra virgin olive oil. That's what I have here, just because that's what I have in my pantry. I use it for pretty much everything. And soy sauce. Do you want about a quarter cup of soy sauce? And it gives it like a nice umami flavor. So nice back note to your marinade. Balsamic vinegar. If you don't like balsamic vinegar for whatever reason, you can use like apple cider vinegar. You want something that has a little bit of sweetness in it. Balsamic vinegar is perfect for a marinade. It gives it a little bit of a syrupy flavor without it being overly sweet. And you want about a half cup of that. I'm splashing everywhere. Okay. And then we're gonna add just a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Also kind of gives it that little extra flavor that you don't, not quite sure what it is. It's not like overly salty. And then I'm gonna use the zest of a lemon. This is your acid. So the basic components of a marinade are like acid and oil and sweetness. Sometimes you can put an emulsifier in there like mustard like we're doing today and then herbs and seasoning. The acid, so lemon or vinegar, is a tenderizer so it's great for meats but I like to use the, the zest as well because it punches up the flavor. And we're just going to cut our lemon in half and squeeze in the juice. And you don't even have to worry about catching the seeds here because you're just using this for a marinade. You're not gonna be drinking this. And now I'm gonna just put in a little bit of Dijon mustard. If you're allergic to mustard, you can leave it out. I have a friend who's allergic to mustard. I've never heard of that until I met her. So I leave it out when I'm cooking for her. A little bit of garlic powder. You can use chopped garlic, chopped fresh garlic if you like as well. The only tip I have there if you're going to use fresh garlic is to make sure that you don't have any bits of garlic stuck to your steak when you cook it because those little pieces of garlic will burn and will taste really bitter. So I like to do the garlic powder and that, that makes sure that you don't have that bitterness from the garlic that's burning. And then Italian seasoning and salt and pepper. And then we're just gonna whisk all this up. I have a zip top bag, and I'm just gonna put my steaks in here. This helps you push the air out. So when you have more surface area on your steaks with the marinade, and you have less air in the bag, you're gonna get more coverage. So every bit of your steak coated with that marinade. So I have two ribeyes here. And ribeyes are fabulous just on their own. Sometimes I cook them just with a little olive oil, salt and pepper. But they also soak up the flavor of a marinade really, really well. So if you're going to make like a steak sandwich or something and you want to marinate it, this is certainly the way to go. And now we're just going to pour our marinade on top. So this is a do as I say, not as I do situation. You want to have this in a bowl. So if you have any leaks in your bag, it doesn't go all over the place. We're just gonna pour the marinade into the bag, all of it. 
And then you press out the air and zip it shut. And now you can put this in the refrigerator and marinate it for about an hour or up to four, maybe six hours. You don't want to go longer than that because the acid, the lemon, and the balsamic vinegar will start to break down the meat a little bit too much and you could end up with like mushy meat instead of super tender, juicy, flavorful meat. Our steaks are all ready to go. They've been marinating for a little bit and our grill is prepped. Nice and hot, so I like to have it at about 500 degrees or hotter if you can get it there. Not every grill is accommodating. So I'm just going to take this out of the marinade and put it right on the rack. You can see the colors changed a little bit from that balsamic vinegar. Awesome. So I'm gonna cook it on the direct heat just for a little bit and then we'll move it to the indirect heat after I flip it so that it can cook through. I like a nice medium rare to medium. Actually, I like it medium rare. Other people like it more medium. So I like to take it off about 140. I'm gonna finish up the steaks. So I like to turn them and just give them like a cross hatch like the diamond shape design on the steaks. It just helps them cook a little bit more evenly. We've got a lot of smoke going on. And we'll check the temperature. We still have a little bit ways to go. We're about a 101. So our steaks are ready to come off. And you can actually tell a little trick that I learned years ago is I like to just check my steaks by touch. And this is not gonna work for everybody, so haters, just whatever. If you press down on the steak, you can kind of tell if it's done or not. And a good way to tell is like, if you press your hands here when it's like just relaxed, that would be a rare steak. And if you open it a little bit, that's more medium rare, and if you open all the way, that would be well done. So think about like your muscle and the tension of your muscle when it's contracting. That's kind of what you're doing with a steak. So we're just gonna let these rest for about 10 minutes, and then we'll cut into them, and then we'll eat. I'm just gonna start cutting this, and you wanna cut across the grain. So sometimes I go the wrong way and then you have to figure it out. That's our first cut. All right, so it's a little more well done than I like, but it's still tender and juicy, and that's the beauty of a marinade, is that if you overcook it, it's still gonna be amazing. One more slice, and then I'll plate it up. a little bit of that end piece here. And take a bite. Sop up some of the juices here on the plate. I usually just dump that all over the plate when I'm done. Mmm. It's so juicy and tender. Like perfectly cooked. You get a little smokiness from the grill. Obviously, if you're gonna use a gas grill, you're not gonna get the smokiness, but you won't miss it because this marinade has made that steak super tender, super flavorful, and amazing. If you like this video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. For more easy recipes, visit thesuburbansoapbox.com. Thanks again.